In this video, we will be taking a look at a bunch of egotistical content creators trying desperately to avoid any sort of criticism caused by nothing except their own ego. And yeah, it went about as well for them as you can guess. So basically, if you've been following Don't Starve YouTube like 3 years back, you might remember there was some drama happening at that time. And well, since then, some information has resurfaced which throws an entire wrench into the works, which is what we'll be taking a look at today, so let's get right into it. Alright, so recently a guy by the name of Gie is how I believe you pronounce his name. Either way, he's done some digging and ended up uploading a video in an attempt to present facts about the aforementioned drama. Now, if you haven't been in the loop, I'll quickly summarize everything important, but if you want more details or sources, I'd recommend you check out his video. Okay, so this was mostly about two dramas, both involving a content creator by the name of The Beard777. Now, Beard is a Don't Starve content creator who mostly makes videos sharing the information from the wiki in a more digestible way if you see BA to read. I'm not personally a fan of his content as I find it better to just read the wiki myself if and when I need it, but if people want to watch his videos, more power to him. There's legitimately nothing wrong with that. Now, the first drama happened once someone by the name of Gabriel Gabriel gave Beard a farm design he wanted him to show off in a video. Beard decided to use the design in the video and that is when Gabriel realized he forgot to ask for credit, but instead of asking Beard for said credit, he instead made a giant fuss about it and cried about Beard supposedly claiming his design as his own. Now, other than the fact Beard never did that, this statement is endlessly ironic because Gabriel didn't come up with the farm design either as there already existed farms on YouTube featuring the mechanics he used years before Gabriel made his farms. However, unlike Beard, Gabriel did claim to have made the farm himself. Now, Beard did handle this situation incredibly poorly. He could have simply credited Gabriel and been done with it, but instead he decided to be very weird about it, as well as preemptively ban all content creators from his channel and Discord, as well as anyone who as much as disagrees with him on literally anything, no matter how insignificant. Which is something you can genuinely criticize Beard for because he really doesn't know how to handle internet beef. Like, at all. But ultimately, none of this really matters much because after Gia uploaded his video, Gabriel ended up agreeing he was in the wrong and apologizing to Beard. So this drama has since been resolved. Which is something that cannot be said for the second drama, which was coincidentally a lot bigger. So basically what happened was that Beard decided to host an art showcase where people could submit art in his Discord and he would make a video featuring them, which he did. In the same video, he also requested that if anyone wants to, they could also redo his channel banner profile picture and stuff like that. And if he likes it, he might end up using it. But even if he doesn't, he'd still feature it in the art showcase. Now, despite the fact he never promised any payment in the first place, he changed his mind a bit later on and paid everyone whose art he used on his channel and socials. Now, keep this part in mind. Despite not making any promise of payment, he ended up paying those whose art he used. So far so good, right? Well, this is where shit hits the fan for all the wrong reasons. Shortly after he paid his artists, some YouTubers led by James Bucket and Jazzy's Games made videos saying that Beard had apparently scammed his artists. Yes, you heard that right. And to address the elephant in the room right now, what Beard did was not a scam by any stretch of the imagination. He never stated that he would pay for the art and clearly stated it's all voluntary and even then he later still ended up changing his mind saying that he is going to pay everyone whose art he uses, which he did. Everyone who submitted art knew exactly what they were getting into, and if they wanted to be paid for their art, they should have asked, or simply, imagine this, not submit art to him if they felt like they deserved monetary compensation. So yeah, Beard never lied and he made good on every promise he made so it wasn't a scam by any sense of the word. I remember seeing this drama when it initially happened and initially just rolled my eyes at it. But now, after Gie released not only that video, but also the follow-up as well, where he shared his experience with several of these content creators, both before and after the Beard fiasco, which, funnily enough, I ended up getting recommended in like the first hour or so of uploading. Yeah, it turned out that this shit was 10 times more pathetic than I originally thought. So, you might remember when I said earlier that Beard struggles immensely with criticism. Well, he is not the only one, as it turns out, some of the YouTubers who participated in calling him out, especially the bigger ones, are also in the same boat. 
Now, I do want to preface this by saying that not all of them are like that. As mentioned before, Gabriel Gabriel did work things out with Beard, and despite apparently still shit-talking him behind his back to stay in good graces with the others, that is at least worth something. Other than him, Don Gianni also ended up admitting to being wrong, and as far as it's known, Helical Puma didn't have any involvement other than saying that scamming is bad, so innocent until proven guilty. And considering he passed away in the meantime, I'm not gonna do any digging on that because doing so is just completely and utterly fucking disgusting. So yeah, these three at the minimum are left out of this. Now as for the others that I will not mention in this video, it's currently unknown what their stance is, but there have been some who kept insisting that they were in the right, and also ended up pulling some insanely retarded shit to try and discredit Gie. James Bucket was probably the least problematic in his response, as he did take the L and apologize for causing the drama and calling the situation a scam. But other than that, he kept insisting Beard was guilty, and despite promising to take the video down after a month at most, the video is not down at the time of recording this, and as you can see from the timestamps earlier, it's been over two months since he said that. Despite being very weird about that, he at the very least left Gia's video in the pinned comment and admitted to at least some fault. Which, while it's not something to clap at, a motherfucker dragging his feet instead of simply saying he was wrong, is infinitely better than what some of the others did, specifically Jazzy's games. Upon seeing the video, Jazzy made a so-called response video where he didn't respond to any of the arguments from Gia's video and instead started talking in circles like a retard about how more artists deserve to be paid, as if Gia ever had a problem with that in the first place. And I would once again like to remind you that Beard did pay for the art that he used, and if you look in Jazzy's comment section under the original video, he clearly states that they would all support Beard if he paid the artists whose art he used, word for word, which once again, Beard did before his video was ever uploaded, so you might be wondering, where is the problem? Where is the problem? Well, as you can see, once Beard himself came to clarify that he did pay the artist whose art he used, Jazzy then moved the goalpost and started demanding that he pay every single person who ever submitted art to him. Yes, it's about as fucking stupid as it sounds. And you'll also notice here that Beard's comments are conveniently gone. Well, that is because Jazzy banned him from the channel. Yeah. The same thing he always criticizes Beard for. Literally the perfect example of the pot calling the kettle black. I genuinely have no idea why these motherfuckers are so fucking allergic to just admitting their fault. I promise you. No one is going to look down on you for taking accountability on things you're genuinely wrong about. In fact, it's the other way around. If you keep insisting you're in the right despite being proven to be objectively wrong, like in this situation, then you're either retarded to the point you don't see what's wrong, or you think your entire audience is so fucking retarded that they would fall for that shit. So which is it? He also claims to have spoken to the winners in this screenshot, yet despite that, those winners tell a completely different story, explaining that what Beard did was not a scam, and that they knew what they were signing up for, and despite that, did end up getting paid. Shocker, I know. Yet despite that, Jazzy just brushed them off. Very curious. Making a video defending the victims but disregarding the input of said victims. I can't even imagine being this fucking pathetic. But that's not where it stopped, as since then, Jazzy made a thread in his Discord server dedicated to talking about Gia's video. And despite having a message pinned in that thread saying how the thread is for peaceful discussion, he sure as shit didn't take any action when another content creator involved, called Swanky Samiad, started having a spurkfest. He first started by trying to refute Gia's arguments by lying through his teeth, he was at the same time lying in the thread about how Gia was being phobic. Yeah, I mean, just look at these messages. Yeah, aren't they just so horrible, guys? It really says a lot when he has to resort to lying about his opposition being insert Twitter buzzword once he started losing the argument like the pathetic piece of shit he truly is. Seriously, this guy is such a fucking bitch. And it's really funny that Jazzy would allow this considering he banned people for way less in the past. Specifically, one time, Gia said that JK Osaurus's guides are not great but that they are fine, and despite that being in a completely different server, Jazzy got on his case and claimed that Gia was quote, 
talking down a fellow creator and decided to ban him from his own server, which once again the argument didn't even take place in. He would then also ban Gia from his channel sometime later over a different minor disagreement. Once again, just like the person he loves to criticize for the exact same thing. Curious. So Jazzy thinks that lying through your teeth about someone being a hateful person is perfectly justified, but saying someone's content is fine is suddenly where he draws the line. Because how dare you express your feelings about someone's content? Now that is truly the thing that's bad. <laughs> but come to find out, other than Sam being his quote, fellow creator, there is another reason why he doesn't see an issue in this, and it's because he implied something similar a year or so back, where he took Gia's joke thumbnail completely out of proportion. I mean, just look at this thumbnail and tell me with a straight face that there's anything problematic. You have to be genuinely fucking retarded to come to that conclusion. Which is why it's no surprise anime profile picture over here came to that same conclusion, but jokes aside, speaking of JK Osaurus, he also had his own response to Beard. Despite not being a part of the initial art callout, he was a part of the Gabriel drama where he sided with Gabriel, and after Gia's video, he reached out to Beard telling him to stay in touch. And after a while, he dragged Beard and his moderators into a private group where he urged them to sign an NDA he drafted with his lawyer with their full legal names and then for Beard and Gabriel to get in a call together. Despite the fact that Beard and Gabriel were already settling things privately just fine at that time. And when Beard refused like a normal person, Jakey just randomly left. So yeah, a totally normal situation with nothing weird about it whatsoever. Obvious sarcasm aside, Gia did mention also having more interactions with Jakey, which also included JK threatening to false copyright strike a different creator over criticism of one of JK's guides. You really gotta love it. But here's the funny thing, if Jazzy Sam and whoever the fuck else is in that dog shit discord server really wanted to criticize Gia's video that much, they absolutely could have as there are a few times where Gia misunderstood some things in his videos, but other than that his videos are still pretty good as those moments are few and far in between. Now I should also add, Demon Rebuild also came out to criticize Gia's video while also refusing to take accountability for being in the wrong. So yeah, that's also that I guess. And then, we also have something being revealed after Gia's video, which is where I got the idea to title this video The Cult of DST YouTubers or whatever the fuck other variation of it. And well, let me just show it to you. He got this email when he was just starting out, so it's a pretty old email, but considering how they act towards each other versus anyone else, who is not a part of their little group, I still feel like this might have some relevance. And besides, it is pretty fucking funny, mainly because it's so out of the blue and it's so odd. But yeah, while they obviously don't have a cult per se, the more prominent YouTubers that partook in the Beard callout definitely do have an echo chamber where they hype each other up and have their heads so far up their own asses that they can't see their own faults, while at the same time, taking any slight bit of criticism from anyone outside the group as a personal attack, as evident by Jazzy's reaction to Gia's comment about Jakey's guides, and by other things such as Sam's pathetic little excuse of a lie towards Gia. It is kinda ironic because Gia did mention being worried about criticizing anyone who is a part of their gay little group, because he thought it might result in backlash from their audiences, but funnily enough, he was only half right. The audiences were actually, well, apart from the obvious blind fanboys, they were pretty open towards his criticism. However, the YouTubers in the group collectively took every opportunity to insist they are in the right by lying and playing the victim. The very things they accuse Beard of all the fucking time. So in the ironic twist of events, everything that you see Beard being accused of in terms of handling criticism completely applies to these YouTubers. They probably made their local movie theaters go out of business with how much projective they've been doing and it's completely and utterly fucking pathetic. You cannot even say that James and Jazz's art callouts were in good faith either. James Bucket explicitly stated he felt bad for letting Beard quote, get away during the Gabriel situation, and he cites it as a reason for causing the drama in the first place. So basically, he was looking to get on Beard's case over anything just because he had beef with Gabriel. Beef which James had no context of be it willingly or ignorantly. 
As for Jazzy, if he really just cared about the artists, he wouldn't have downplayed their input and he certainly wouldn't have tried moving the goalposts when Beard told him the artists were paid. And he also wouldn't have banned him from the channel if reaching him was such a concern to him that he felt the need to drill it in during the response video that Beard had blocked him on everything. When Beard appeared, he could have just offered him a private conversation or at the very least apologized and made a pinned comment correcting himself, it was that fucking simple. Likewise, if Sam cared about the truth in any way, he certainly wouldn't have went full fucking Twitter mode like a pussy ass bitch he is when presented with the facts, plain and fucking simple. If JK cared about improving his content or at the very least had basic decency, he wouldn't have threatened a false copyright strike. These YouTubers are probably the worst actors in the entire situation. Do they regret their actions? I don't know, but if they would like to prove me wrong by finally taking accountability and being better in the future, I'll roll out the red carpet. Literally all they have to do is make a video or a community post saying, hey, I fucked up on this, it will not happen again, and then simply not do it again. It takes like 10 fucking seconds. Once again, just look at Don Gianni and Gabriel. They apologized and the world didn't fucking explode now, did it? In fact, I'm willing to bet people respect them a whole lot more because they were able to see their faults instead of pretending they don't exist. These four content creators could easily be in the same boat, but it's up to them. But for now, I think I'm gonna end it off here. I legitimately do not know why they can't just think for themselves instead of screaming in their echo chamber about how they are always right, but what can you really do? So I guess the moral of the story here is, criticism bad because my echo chamber said so. Yeah, I am honestly curious how many people will try to accuse me of just being a Gia fanboy, despite the fact I didn't even know about him until literally a few days ago. In fact, I've actually watched quite a lot of Jazzy and James, and I do consider their content to be genuinely good, which is why I just can't understand why they feel the need to act so stuck up instead of doing the correct and honestly the easiest thing they could do. It's not a sign of weakness to apologize for your faults, I promise you that. Oh and just act like individuals instead of mindless drones for fuck's sake. Well then, that's pretty much all I had to say on this. Be sure to like and subscribe to boost me the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.